the Volkswagen Vento. Now this is not the most feature loaded or the most spacious or the best looking C sedan in India but yet we are going crazy over this car. Why? You see, the C sedan market has a lot of options for different kind of buyers. You want a value for money offering, pick the CRs. You want a feature loaded car, pick the Verna. You want space and comfort, the Honda City is for you. You want a good looking sporty car, you have the Monte Carlo edition of the Skoda Rapid. But if you want a car that gives you thrilling moments with a timeless design that has aged very well, what do you do? You pick the Vento. Now before we start the review of the TSI, the pricing first which is a good factor nowadays. Uh, the base uh, version of the Vento can be used for approximately 9 lakh rupees extra room daily but there are a lot of offers and discounts going on from the dealer side. So eventually the car is approximately used for 8.4, 8.3 lakh rupees extra room daily. This one the Highland Plus, not the TSI edition, the top end version the Highland Plus manual is basically for 12.1 lakh rupees extra room daily the official pricing but the offer of the month is for 11 lakh rupees so in my opinion the top end manual vento with the firecracker of an engine for 11 lakh rupees extra room daily is good good value for money deal now with the vento you end up using words like elegant understated and timeless and why not see the entire body shell has remained unchanged for the last decade or so but over the years Volkswagen has tweaked a lot of elements to ensure this one remains popular with those who do not want a very flashy car. For instance, over the years you have a new DRL setup in the headlights, you have a tweaked bumper, you have a new grille, you have tweaked design for the alloy wheels and so on. And hence I think for those who want such a car to match their personality, they do not want a overly funky or a sporty or a flashy car. For them, the Vento still makes sense. Now the car you see here is the TSI edition. It was launched a few months back. It is based on the normal Highline Plus but of course has a few differentiating elements like the sticker work you see on the side over there and of course the spoiler at the back. This edition is now off the market but yes, otherwise from the DRLs to the alloy wheels it remains same as the Highline Plus model. The cabin of the Vento, now there are two sides of the coin over here. On the good side, uh, it feels well built, uh, it feels well put together. The design is not overly done like the stereos of the car. So this is going to go down well with those who want an understated appeal on the inside. The fit and finish is nice, no doubt. And from a driver's perspective, it's a cozy and a good place to be. Large windows, so visibility is not an issue. However, for short drivers, they might not be able to see the edges of the bonnet. That could be an issue. The other side of the coin is got to do with the features. We all know in the Volkswagen Vento, features is an issue. Right from the smart keyless entry, it's not there. To a push button start, it's not there. There's no wireless charging, there's no sunroof and so on. So these things are definitely going to be missing because most of the competition, most of the cars do offer you all these features. And nowadays people are going crazy for such uh, gizmos and uh, aids in the car. But apart from that, from a driver's perspective, if you want an old school vehicle, for example, these lovely analog dials over here, the flat bottom steering feels nice to hold, feels nice to, nice to see as well. So these things will definitely charm you up, but at the cost of features. So that's about the front seat, things at the back, well, let's go. Things at the back, for starters, the space, we all know that it's not the most spacious car of the lot, but at the same time, there is good amount of space if you see that this seat has been positioned for my height i stand six feet tall i have approximately two to three inches of space left over here but at the same time the crs and the uh, city will have a lot more space apart from that the good thing is that the doors they open very very wide so getting into the car is not an issue however on the other side this window look at this it only rolls down to approximately 60 percent of the space over here so this can be an issue if you want to if you want to be enjoying uh, the mountain air on a holiday this will not go down you have your armrest over here but no cup holders there is one cup holder over here you also have a charging outlet and the ac vents over here so 
space is good if you see it as a standalone car but not good in terms of the competition one issue will definitely be there for the fifth passenger for the middle low passenger that's got to do with the high transmission tunnel it's really intrusive into the space of the fifth person uh, i have about an inch of headroom left over here decent amount of uh, shoulder space so on the whole uh, it's not a bad place to be it's just that you know other other cars will offer you more space so if you're going to be with your family on a regular basis keep this thing in your mind now in the BSX Avtar you only have one engine with the Vento that is the new 1.0 TSI the same engine we also see in the Skoda Rapid and the Volkswagen Polo it's a three cylinder setup turbocharged engine producing 110 PS of power and 175 Nm of torque if i compare this with the earlier larger 1.2 TSI this one has five extra bhp of course two transmission options a six speed manual we have right now and a six speed automatic कितना देती है वेल सर्टिफाइड इकोनॉमी फॉर द मैनुअल वन इज ऑलमोस्ट सेवनटीन पॉइंट फाइव के एम पी एल सो नंबर्स असाइड हाउ इज द कार टू ड्राइव वेल आई ऑलरेडी हैव अ ग्रीन ऑन माई फेस लेट्स हिट द रोड The current uh, Vento only comes with one engine option, uh, no diesel. Uh, but thankfully, you have a manual and automatic. Uh, as compared to the earlier naturally aspirated petrol, that had a larger displacement, displacement of course. But uh, if it comes to performance, power, and fuel economy, the new one is an improvement. So, yeah, these small capacity turbocharged petrol engines are becoming popular in India, and this one is no exception. For starters, let me show you how the engine sounds like. 3,000 RPM, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 RPM. So yes, it does sound well. At lower speeds, at idling, there is a bit of uh, a typical three-cylinder uh, gruffness, I would say. But overall, the vibrations, the noise, the harshness—it's really well controlled inside the cabin. Uh, traditionally, four cylinders are much more smoother than a three-cylinder setup, but in the Vento, this thing has been taken care of in a rather nice manner. Also, when you want, it screams. So, first to second, there is a bit of chirping as well. In normal uh, driving scenario, suppose you are in traffic at 60, 70 in the sixth gear, uh, no protest from the engine, you will still pick up speed easily. so typically in third fourth gear 30 to 50 it's very very comfortable it does not feel out of place there is no strain on the engine but of course this car is not about uh, driving at lower rpms uh, but it's it's more about enjoying the rev band enjoying the more of torque that's coming in once more i'm going to take a u turn in second gear picks up speeds very easily there is not a very hard limiter coming in but a soft one at 6600 uh, rpm and then you upshift uh talking of upshift the gearbox uh, it's a joy to use but uh, for my liking the clutch is definitely on the heavier side it could have been lighter uh likewise for a tall driver like me you know uh, on the move my left knee hits the central uh, console also there is not a, not enough space for a dead pedal so these small small things can catch you in the long run as an owner uh the steering well vento is known for dynamics and this one is no different it's not very light so uh when you drive the car for the first time you are taken aback because uh, usually Volkswagen steerings are light at lower speeds and this one it does require some kind of effort for example i'm going to take a u turn over here slow down to 5 or 10 kmph breaker coming up yeah so it does require effort on the plus side the feedback the stability at higher speeds the confidence the car gives you is very nice for example i'm going to uh, change lanes at 70 this is where you start enjoying the vento ditto for your high speed manners the, the wheel base is not very long but at higher speeds which this this car feels very comfortable at higher speeds triple digit speeds no issues at all in fact the vento tsi is meant to chew up miles 
uh, in the six gear if you are cruising at suppose 80 kmph the engine is literally sleeping at 1600 rpm so that also means your fuel economy goes up in fact if you stick to legal speeds of 90 to 100 on open roads with the ac running this will easily give you over 20 kmpl that is a lot a lot of mileage from a turbocharged petrol engine so yeah to summarize uh, the biggest plus point about the vento is the way it feels to drive from a driver's perspective the clutch could have been slightly lighter uh, the steering could have been slightly light, lighter but otherwise i think it is a joy to drive it's a true true driver's delight in the segment yes the vento is not a very practical or a spacious or a feature loaded vehicle but it's a car that is enjoyable and this matters to a lot of people if you want the thrill of driving if you want to have a grin on your face every single time you get behind the wheel the vento even today is a very very good buy in the segment